just isn't going to seem the same. Without red, where can the be? Well, thanks, Mayor Brick, but I've been on the force long enough to see three presidents come and go from the White House. After an election season like this one, I'd just as soon be at home sitting in my recliner drinking a beer by the time the next decision is made. Well, thanks for stopping by, though, Owen Dove. Uh, thanks for the sky. Uh, don't, don't mention it. Don't mention it. Well, Sergeant Peppers, all I can say is there's going to be a lot of lonely hearts around here. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you at your retirement party next week. There's no way you're getting out of it, so don't even try. I'm too tired to fight you on that. See you then. You got it. Okay. Tennille Morgan. <laughs> Miss Meter will be on the guest list for this evening. Uh, yes. Who's your friend? Uh, actually, Red. Uh, this is your new partner, fresh from the academy. Dylan Righteous, Sergeant Peppers. <laughs> fresh from the academy? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, I knew I had to be showing somebody the ropes, but I didn't expect somebody with training wheels. But look, look, I'm only two weeks from retirement. Give me a break, huh? Sergeant Peppers, I'm pleased to meet you, sir. I've heard so much about you, I can't wait to get started. And don't worry, you won't have to do a thing. You can just sit back and be nervous and surly while I do all the chase scenes and tackle criminals to the ground at the edge of rooftops and drive recklessly through the streets, destroying all the cars in my path without consequence. <laughs> all while having time for a steamy love scene. <laughs> While my hair remains perfectly cropped. <laughs> all right, all right, hot chat, keep your shirt on. Just where the heck do you think you are? This is Chagrin Falls, huh? Not the back lot of Universal Studios. Look, look, I may be retiring in two weeks, but until I do, you're on my watch, my rules. Got it? Okay, you two, while you learn to uh, play nice in the sandbox, I just got word we're getting more company. This one's ready for lockup, Captain. Uh, great, I'll take her back. Missy, come with me, I'll get you settled. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Captain, can I have an extra pillow? Sure. Extra pillow never killed anyone. Oh, come on, you guys, seriously, my stomach feels terrible. Well, perhaps you should have thought of that before you drank your way through the menu at the Greenville Inn. Ha! Ah, I'm so leaped over. I could drink anybody here under the table. He'd be hiding under the table if he knew what was good for him. I never thought I'd see his face again. Oh, you know this guy, Red? <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch him, you rookie! And we're not on a first name basis. I'm Sergeant Peppers to you until further notice. Got it? That guy is the reason my partner's murder is still a cold case. Ty Beck was the sole witness to the crime. Only when it came time to finger the suspect in the lineup, he fingered the wrong guy. And I swore if I ever saw him again. I hear you. I got your back, partner. I'm not your partner! Oh, my head is throbbing. Oh, stop crying, you big baby. Here, and take another one of these. Another aspirin, and this time don't eat the cotton. Oh, hold it right there, Mr. E. What are you doing? First of, first of all, we never give meds to perps. And second, 
Secondly, what you're about to serve our friend isn't even aspirin. What does this say? Haloperidol. <laughs> hey, wait. Is that a street drug like bath salts? Should I confiscate it? Cool it down, Johnson. He's got prescriptions. Many, many prescriptions. Yes. No cause for alarm, Officer Righteous. Haloperidol is just the generic form of Haldol, a common antipsychotic. What were you thinking, Mr. E? Oh, I'm sorry. It's hard to keep all these bottles straight. You see, the robot dragonflies, they move things when I'm not looking. <laughs> they want my lucky popsicle, but I've been sucking on it since I was a kid. It's not for them. Hey, how did you know about this medicine? Have you been taking it too? <laughs> no. But as the captain of this precinct, it's part of my job to know exactly the random and obscure facts necessary to move the plot along at any given moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's hard to keep all these bottles straight. I get confused with all these Smurfs. You know, I don't even know which end is up. Well, why don't you sit your end down and do some chanting or something while I get the story on our visitor. Have a seat over here, please, sir. Now, Officer Buckle. Can you tell us exactly what happened and who our drunken friend is, please? Sure, Captain. My name is Booker. Dano Booker. <laughs> I'm a cop. It's a tough job, but I work here in Chagrin Falls, a hotbed of crime and corruption <laughs> in Northeast Ohio. It's a tough job, but I do it because I'm a cop. Our perp is Mr. Ty Vec. He works for Cannon and Company Construction. Mr. E was working undercover at the Greenville Inn when he saw Mr. Beck stagger from the bar, get into his vehicle, and leave at high speed. I was on my way back from the Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> when I got a call that there was a DUI headed my way. I observed Mr. Beck speed past me, and I followed him. I saw him turn into the parking lot at the old Ibex paper mill. I radioed Mr. E for backup. We observed Mr. Beck trying to break into the plant. We apprehended him, and we brought him in. Uh, the Ibex paper mill. You mean that vacant building just east of here, which used to manufacture paper bags. It's been closed since 2004. It was recently purchased by the Spillway Group, whose plan is to turn it into an entertainment complex. They haven't been able to begin the project yet due to a host of complications, not the least of which being the designation of the property as a historic site. <laughs> is she always like this? No, she's usually worse. But we've got a lot of exposition to get to before intermission, so she kept it brief. Yes. <laughs> That is the location. I met up with Bookham and we went down to the plant. That's when we found Ty Beck trying to break in. All he could say was, please let me in before it is too late. Clearly he was intoxicated. <coughs> so we brought him down here on breaking and entering at the DUI to see what we could find out. Isn't this where I'm supposed to get my one phone call? We'll happily provide you with that phone call, Mr. Beck. But first, could you tell us why you were trying to break into the Ivex plant? I used to work there, back when it was a paper mill. I realized tonight that I left some of my personal belongings there, so I figured nobody would be there so I could get in. Can I get that phone call? I suggest we give him a hot cup of joe in that phone call and let him sleep it off. Perhaps we'll get more information in the morning. <coughs> Did you care for a donut? <laughs> Obviously, I've eaten all the powdered ones, 
but I do have these cute Katy Perry ones with the pink frosting and sprinkles. <laughs> Thanks, Officer Bogum. I'm sure the coffee will suffice. Mr. E, let the man have his call. Hey, cowboy, you an actor? Get your feet off the stage. <laughs> Yes, you will. I think we both know what happens if you don't. I think you should watch your tone, Jenny, because I haven't said anything yet. But if I don't see your pretty face here in the next couple hours, who knows what might slip out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. See you soon. <laughs> Let's go, Ty. Have a seat. This is Miranda Rice. She'll take your information. I'm going on a donut run. Anybody need anything? State your name. Ty Vec. Spell it. T-Y, last name Vec. Well, well, well. It's been a long time, Ty. You may be clean in the eyes of the law, but in my eyes, you're still the power to let my partner Stiller go free. I may be going to retire soon, but that doesn't mean I'm too old to settle the score. Oh, let it go. That's water under the bridge. And holding a grudge like that might cause your blood pressure to rise, and we wouldn't want you to retire too early now, would we, Red? You're addressing the savages, Mr. Beck, and you are not on a first-name basis. Back off, Barney Fife. This is none of your business. It's between me and the old man. You're messing with the wrong sidekick, Mr. Beck. This is my partner. His business is my business. Until you've worn a badge, you don't get to call the shots. Speaking of shots, what about your peace, officer? Oh, don't taste me, bro. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want you to get so hot, Peppers. Right, right, right. I'll crack the pepper jumps in this police station, in fact. One more word out of you, Ty, and I'll give you an extreme angle. Shot the bitch. <laughs> Are you boys finished establishing your motives? Because my shift's almost over, and we still have characters in the wings waiting to make an entrance. We've got Misty in cell number one, but we can't put Ty in cell number two because we still haven't fixed that security keypad. Oh, well, maybe I can help, Captain. I studied security and alarm systems at the Academy. Maybe I can be of service. Sure, of course you did. Great, go and make yourself useful. In the meantime, Ty, you'll be roommates. <laughs> so enthusiastic. You'll be roommates with Missy Meter until we get your cell settled. You mean you've only got two prison cells in this entire precinct? <laughs> Are you kidding, honey? This is chagrin. That's one more cell, then we have parking spaces. <laughs> Can I help you, ma'am? I'm Jenny Sorbet. I received a phone call from Ty Beck. Am I allowed to see him? Hey, Captain. This lady wants to visit with uh, Ty Beck. Uh, Captain Daniel Morgan, meet Jenny Sorbet. Jenny Sorbet? Aren't you the one who's interested in converting the Ivex property into a, a brewery, an ice cream emporium? That's right. The ice cream bar. We pride ourselves on serving over 200 decadent flavors, all with more alcohol content than other leading brands. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I brought Ty one of his favorite delicacies. It's called Rum Raspberry Revenge. It's a dish best served cold. That sounds delicious. <laughs> 
Do you mind if I try? No, 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 no. Although this may be one of Ty's absolute favorites, it really doesn't show off my best work. I think that you might be interested in um, Miami Ice. It's a beautiful pastel blue, Captain, and contains spiced rum. Spiced rum? <laughs> I don't know why, but that sounds really appealing. <laughs> well, I'll have some samples brought down at another time, but now, might I please see Ty before this melts? Sure. His cell's being worked on at the moment, but I can arrange for you to see him in one of our interrogation rooms. Is she ready to go out on duty again? God, I hate mimes. <laughs> Mr. E. I appreciate the whole vow of silence thing, but I think maybe you may have mixed up your undercover assignments once again. <laughs>
Looks like Mr. Beck will not be having coffee this morning. Don't tell me you prefer Starbucks to Dunkin'. <laughs> not unless they serve a veggie double half half soy milk latte that can resurrect the dead. Huh? <laughs> Miranda, are you saying that Ty Beck is deceased? Huh. I told you I'd be needed. <laughs> now, am I to understand that someone has died while the police custody? That, that seems to be the case, but I don't know how this could have happened. Let me go check it out and see what's going oh, on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, Captain. It wouldn't be appropriate for anyone associated with the scene to investigate. I'm going to call in some fresh eyes to take over from here. Well, I'm sure they'll have your complete cooperation. Of course, Justine, whatever you need. <laughs> Inspector Gotcha, ADA Lawler here. You and Detective Ketchum are needed at the station. We've asked him to come down uh, and speak with us. He'll be on his way soon. In the meantime, that leaves Miss Demeanor, the victim's cellmate. Uh, now, Miss Meaner, with uh, the help of Miranda Rice, we've done a little background check on you. It seems that your record was pretty clean up until the untimely death of your adopted parents. Seems like you took their death pretty hard. Not that I blame you. That's just it. You can't blame anyone for an accident. We were in the process of moving into our new house when the second floor collapsed. They were killed instantly. I came home from school and found my whole life changed. All because of shoddy construction work. <laughs> Talk about bringing down the house. <laughs> so you're an orphan then? Technically, I guess. I was 18 when it happened, so suddenly I was on my own. Their life insurance helped me finish school, find a new place to live. The builders paid up too, but only for the property damage. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm uh, Lewis Cannon. I, I got a call from a detective, Ketchum? Ketchum. She does, however, cut the mustard. <laughs> as much as I'm sure everyone relishes your wit. <laughs> Some people want to get on to dessert. Do you mind if we move things along here? Be my guest. Mr. Cannon, this is my partner, Inspector Gotcha. Oh, Thanks hi. for coming down. Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, we understand you work with Mr. Beck at Cannon and Company? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm Cannon, and uh, Ty is, well, <laughs> he was company. What exactly happened here? I mean, how did he end up here? Your partner was caught trying to break into the old Ibex plant last night. Would you happen to know anything about that? No. Why would I? Why would he? Well, we were hoping you could tell us, Mr. Cannon. And that's right. Uh, the undercover officer said that he saw you and Mr. Beck tossing a few back at the Greenville last night. Undercover officer? Oh, you mean that guy who's been sitting at the end of the bar for the last two weeks dressed as a monk? Yeah, yeah. His assignment was to investigate how the Greenville could be getting Great Lakes Christmas ale in the off-season. <laughs> He's actually supposed to be posing as a local beer brewer. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't call that blending in, and, and I doubt there's anything holy about the water he's been drinking. Regardless, what were you and Mr. 
Vivek doing at the Greenville? Uh, we often go out for a cold one after a long day's work. I see. And uh, did Ty have a tendency to overdo it? The arresting officer said he came in pretty sloppy. No, not usually. I mean, like, we, you know, we always have more than one or two drinks. Uh, he's no alcoholic or anything, mind you, but, but, um... What? Yeah, well, um, last night he, uh, he did have a few more than usual. See, I told him I was letting him go. I see. Why give Ty the boot? <laughs> Sorry, you, you said tie the boot. I was, <laughs> never mind. Really? The quality of his work had been slipping. I, I mean, a lot. He was never that good at the job to begin with, but uh, things have really been going downhill lately. So uh, I decided it was time to make the break. I see. So, so then Ty took it hard, got a little blitz, and decided to go do some breaking and entering at the plant where he used to work before he came to work for you. No, no, actually, he took it surprisingly well. <laughs> He said he'd be all right. Uh, and since he wasn't getting up in the morning to go to work, and I wasn't going down to the job site until noon today, we decided to mark the end of our partnership with a few more drinks. Uh, we parted ways around, I don't know, 11.30. Well, and did Mr. Beck give you any idea where he was headed? Any suggestion he was about to bust into the island? Or why? No, no, none at all. I, I just don't understand. <laughs> sound really tough and smart. <laughs> and it helps us keep up the illusion that we're all real cops and not just paid actors. <laughs> <laughs> paid actors? I was told this was a volunteer gig for to raise money for Chagrin Valley Little Theater. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. cellmate was Misty Meaner. Right, and we know that his last official visitor was Jenny Sorbet. Right, and we know that sometime during Act One there was a convenient blackout during which uh, Officer uh, Sergeant Peppers discharged his firearm and Officer Righteous discharged his taser. So I guess, uh, I guess the only thing left to do is to ask for a little help from our friends. Oh. oh, come on. <laughs> you knew we had to sneak another Beatles joke in there somewhere. All right, well, this is the part where you get to help us out. So I put my notepad away. We have a lot of likely suspects, and we have a dead man in custody, and we don't know who did it, why they did it, or how. So this is where we are going to deputize a lot of you and send you off to investigate. So here's how this works. We are going to deputize you in a moment, and when we do, you are then going to go out into the street. You're going to go out the front doors and turn left. If you go straight, you're going into the river. There's no clues there. <laughs> you're going to head down to the end of the street. For those of you who aren't locals to Chagrin, welcome. By the way, how many Murder by the Falls vets do we have here? Not bad, not bad, and a lot of new faces. Excellent, welcome aboard. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go down to the corner, and there's kind of a V-shaped uh, area of stores. There's a gazebo in the middle. There are two things you're going to be looking for. One, you're going to be looking for the live clues. Live clues are people in costume. Hopefully they should stick out. Please don't accost the passers-by. They don't know anything. There are four of them. There are four of those. You're going to look for them. I would recommend splitting your team up to cover more ground, because you don't want to be late for dessert. Um, so you're going to look for them, and you're going to talk to them. They are people who know some of the suspects, some of the other characters in the show, and they have a little more backstory on them than you might have picked up 
here. So they will give you some information. Um, just as a general rule, if they tell you they don't know something, they're not giving you a line of bull, they probably don't know. <laughs> Secondly, you will be looking for window clues. Window clues are things hidden in the windows of our lovely shops in Chagrin Falls. They are things that look out of place, uh, usually, and they are things you should know when you see them that they are a clue. Um, there are also things that are just in the windows that belong to the stores. <laughs> Based on last night, let me just save you some trouble. Peter's Men's Store always has ties in the window. <laughs> I believe the house store has some pillows as well, which confused some people, so you may want to ignore that one. But you're looking for things that are out of place that point towards something in the story. So I'm not going to tell you how many of those there are. That is up to you. There are five spaces in your program. That does not mean there are necessarily Yeah, don't look for clues. <laughs> if you yeah, think you found them all, you don't need to fill all of the spaces. But uh, yeah, there may be less clues than there are spaces. We need to go to the Greenville? What's that? <laughs> no, you don't need to go to the Greenville. <laughs> That'll be a long walk. I don't think you'll make it back for Act 2. I can drive you. <laughs> <laughs> After party! So, the area that we're going to be covering is the space between across from the town hall, where some of you will be having dessert, and roughly where the gazebo is. You don't need to go all the way to the end of the street. You need to go just to where the crosswalks are, maybe one, two storefronts past the crosswalk, but you don't need to cover all the way to the end. You don't need to go down to the stores on the opposite side. So once you hit the gazebo, you've, you've about reached the end of where you need to be. Um, so I believe that covers that. After you're done looking, you're going to be heading back to dessert. You should all have a name tag that has the letter of your team slash table, and it will also say where you are having dessert, either at the town hall, which is the big impressive old building at the end of the street here, or at CBLT's new annex, Red Barn building, which is immediately on the opposite side of this wall. Um, one of the things that we're raising money for. We own that building now. Um, so, I believe that covers all of the necessaries, yeah? Have I missed anything? Uh, Good. Yeah, I think you have roughly 45 minutes or so to cover. So like I said, you're gonna wanna do as much as you can, probably split the team up, cover one side, cover the other. So here's how the deputization works. If you've got one of those little badges, now is a good time to put it on. And we're going to have you all raise your right hand and repeat after me. Some people are ahead of me. Aye. Aye. State your name. State your name. Two. Yeah, every time. Do hereby swear. It's not mine. 
last night somebody actually tried to tried to say that it was Ty's baby. It was, right. We're like, you guys really were stretching for that one. Uh, we all, we heard some other interesting things on the street. I, I think the, the Halloween decorations in the um, in that one store confused people. The the, uh, the skull and crossbones yeah. canter um, really threw some people off, which was cool. And the, the Mitt Romney sign. <laughs> Nothing to do with somebody. Somebody last night thought that there was a mint Romney flavor in Jenny's. Uh, <laughs> I said it just tasted like cardboard. Yeah. But if you wait long enough, it'll taste like something else. All right. So. <laughs> Another clue. Obama supporters are straight ahead. But but uh, a lot of you were doing doing some very good work out there. It sounded like a lot of you were were extremely creative, um, <laughs> both in good ways and bad. But we will find out soon enough. Um, so uh, you know, detective, I yeah. think this is now what the fifth year that you and I have been called down here to help solve the mystery and sugar in together. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, some people think that Friday the 13th is unlucky, but I'm beginning to think that maybe the first weekend after Labor Day is worse. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> you know, I remember our first team up back in the theater's 78th season, when we were called down here to solve that mystery where that um, over-dramatic woman had poisoned somebody accidentally with her father's blood thinners. Yeah, yeah. That was anybody, anybody here, here for that one? You know, yeah? <laughs> Thought they looked familiar. <laughs>
You know, Dr. Thology. Wait, let, let me guess. Patrick. Pathology. <laughs> so now, uh, what did your exam indicate? We have a homicide. Mr. Beck was brought in DOA. According to his body temp, the TOD was approximately 2 o'clock AM EDT. There was no evidence of foreign DNA or GSR on the body, and no one attempted CPR. Close examination of my MRI, EKG, CBC, and even my GPS <laughs> led me to believe the COD was M-E-K. Hmm. Well, I better be sure we keep this on the deal. If the media finds out this all happened in police custody, it'll be all over NBC, CBS, KBC, <laughs> and definitely Fox. <laughs> FYI, if we're going to be on TV, I better set my DVR so I can burn some DVDs for my BFFs. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Now, I know you'd rather be getting some R and R. Uh, I will be back in touch once the Purvis is, in, is in custody and we have an MO. Was there anything else you'd care to add before you leave in your SUV? As a matter of fact, MGM NPR, PMS, ADD, WVIZ, and RESPECT. <laughs> Don't forget to support CVLT. <laughs> practices finding and findings about Mr. Beck. I suppose it's best we get down to our usual business from Act Two. The interrogations. interrogations. Absolutely. <clears throat> now, everyone in this room had contact with our victim in the hours prior to his death. But not all of you had a motive. Gotcha? Catch up? Why don't we begin with those who you know are key? some of your antipsychotic meds instead of aspirin? Yes, I feel very bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that just a wand would have hurt of the poor man. It could be Officer 
Righteous and Sergeant Peppers. Both of you had weapons and clear opportunity to harm Ty during the blackout. It's true that Dylan did discharge his weapon, but he claimed it was only because he'd been startled. Is there reason to believe that Officer Righteous shot Ty by mistake? No. No, none whatsoever. In fact, Dylan's story matches up with the crime scene investigation and this medical report. There was no blood on the body, no bullet wounds, no shell casings found at the scene. I don't think Ty was killed by a bullet. Well, that is good news. Here you go, Dylan. You can have your piece back. Oh, and uh, maybe get some lotion for that itchy trigger finger of yours, too, huh? Remember, that's a lethal weapon. Ooh, I love that movie. <laughs> of course you do. Hey, let's be careful out there. You may be wearing the blue, kid, but you're still green. Which brings us to red. The sergeant had one of the strongest motives we were aware of. That's right. We understand that Ty was the only person who could have put your partner's killer behind bars. Do you care to explain that to us in an informative but short monologue? <laughs> That's right. October 14th, 2004. My partner and I were patrolling on Pine. A car came tearing out of nowhere down Arm Street and T-boned us and killed my partner. I was knocked unconscious, and when I came to, I saw the other car slowly driving away, and Ty Beck stumbling out of the Greenville Inn. I know he could have ID'd the other driver. Another officer found the damaged vehicle, and we brought the suspect in for questioning, but Ty Beck was too drunk to ID the suspect, and we had to let him go. When you told Officer Righteous about your past dealings with Ty, you made some threats, didn't you? If there's one thing I've learned in 30 years in the police court, it's threats don't make them, don't, don't make them, don't equate with murder. <coughs> Seeing Ty again brought back a lot of bad memories, but I hated the guy, but that doesn't mean I killed him. Well, the medical examination doesn't show any electrical abnormalities or heart failure that might indicate the taser was the reason he died. Red, you're in the black. <laughs> so Ty wasn't shot, or shot. How about smothered? <laughs> Misty, you were sharing a cell with Ty last night due to security problems with the other cell. Oh, and you asked for an extra pillow when you saw Ty come through the door. Did you two know each other? I didn't know him personally. Just enough to want him dead. <laughs> so you smothered him with that extra pillow in his sleep? No, I didn't. I wanted to, but I couldn't go through with it. What exactly did you have against Mr. Beck, anyway? He was part of the construction crew that worked on my parents' new house. It seemed like every time we went to the new place to see how construction was coming along, Ty was getting yelled at. I think by that guy over there, for doing something the wrong way. When the house collapsed and killed my parents, I just knew it wouldn't have happened if he had done his job the right way. I recognized him when he came in. For a moment, I thought about taking revenge. But after spending a few hours in jail, I realized how much it would suck to be sentenced to life for murder. <laughs> My mom and dad were kind enough to take me in and give me a loving home as a baby. And I wouldn't be honoring their memory by throwing my life away like that. Oh, wise decision, young lady. Uh, speaking of decisions, Mr. Cannon, why would you employ someone who is so clearly negligent? I hired Ty at the request of a friend. But if you knew that he was responsible for the deaths of Mr. and Mrs. Meaner, why didn't you tell anybody? Um, uh, I... It's all right, Lou. You don't have to protect me anymore. <laughs> okay, Jen. <laughs> Detective, I hired Ty. Because Jenny asked me to. 
as her friend, and as the love of her life. What? <laughs> we had an affair about 20 years ago. Yeah, I was married, and she was seeing someone. See, she worked at the accounting office at the Ibex plant, and so she knew Ty from work. And then when the plant closed, he really needed a job, so Jenny begged me to find him a place at Cannon and Company. You know, I, uh, she sounded so desperate. I, uh, against my better judgment, I gave in. You know, although we're only really close friends these days, I could still never say no to her. How sweet.
You brought the man who was threatening you a pint of raspberry revenge. Oh, and you wouldn't let me have a taste. <laughs> well, Captain, it might be a good thing that your sweet tooth didn't win out. It says here that the cause of death was poison. <gasps> Absolutely not. Raspberry Revenge truly was Ty's favorite. I just came down here in the hopes of sweet-talking him into not blackmailing me anymore. I thought that maybe because he was sitting in a cell, I could talk him into changing his life. And then he told me that Lewis had fired him and he was going to go back to the counterfeiting operation. And I said, no, no, I could not be a party to his crimes any longer. I had as much on him as he had on me. Well, that's a spice that made the ball. <laughs> no wonder you tried to break in the plant. <laughs> Mama Santa, you're not undercover here. Lose the accent already. Okay. <laughs> I am so sorry that our story had to come out this way. I would never do anything to hurt you or, or to put you through such trouble. <laughs> It's okay, Jen. I forgive you. Is this what I think it is? I can't believe you're still wearing this after all these years. Well, I've made a lot of choices along the way. Some good. I always regretted that we couldn't be a family. You because you were married. I was destitute. It was the right decision to give up our baby daughter. But I never forgot her. This hat locket is all I have to remind me of what could have been. Well, if I know my Hollywood endings, and I do, I'd say, whenever a woman has a half a locket, there's a child out there somewhere who has the other half. Oh? Shut the front door! <laughs> Does yours look like this? Oh. <laughs> you look just like your father! <laughs> The question is, why? 
Why? Why? <laughs> because he was a huge liability, that's why. He was lazy, he was sloppy, and most of all, he was dangerous. The man was worthless! But you were firing him. You've known about his work habits for a long time. Why decide to kill him now? Ooh, I didn't intend to at first. But then we had a few drinks after I fired him, and, and he starts bragging about how, hey, he's going to be fine without me. Yeah. He tells me he's been bragging about blackmailing some ice cream shop owner, and he's just going to press her for the cash to get him over for a little while. I figured out that he was talking about my Jenny, and I snapped! I just snapped! So, the can of salt was out in the truck. I got it, brought it in. When he went to the john, I poured some of it in his beer. <laughs> I didn't even know if, if it would kill him, but I knew he was in for a rough night. Well, if that isn't a confession, I don't know what is. Huh? Somebody read him his Miranda rights. Yes? <laughs> not you. Officer Bookham, Bookham. Well, Cannon. Looks like you'll be going in with a bang. Oh. Somebody thought there might be some sort of fish-flavored ice cream. <laughs> um, almost directly across the street at the new Verizon store, there was a container of ice cream with counterfeit bills. Um, the bills, as if the more astute of you noticed, are sort of partially printed. Um, there were a lot of people counting up exactly how much money was in both windows. Very, very interesting tactic. Completely pointless, but very interesting. <laughs> But that, that container was absolute extort, extortion, extort, with imitation mint, counterfeit. Um, <laughs> stupid, isn't it? Um, that was the other one from last night. Somebody was, re we, we overheard somebody reading that going, extort, extort. I, I took Latin in high school, but I can't remember what that means. <laughs> wow, okay, okay. Um, then there was in the window of the bookstore, at Fireside Bookstore, there was the pepper mill. The mill being the important part of the clue, not the pepper. The pepper mill with Ty and more of the counterfeit cash, making the connection between Ty and Jenny and the mill. And then the last clue, which some of you may have missed, in the window of the hardware store was a container of M.E.K. paint stripper, the murder weapon. So, let's see, they, they always give me a few, they give me the, the winning sheet, but they also give me the ones that had particularly creative answers. Um, somebody saw in the window at White Magnolia, which was not involved, uh, cameras indicating security footage from the Ibex plant. <laughs> oh, we also have Misty Meter and Dylan are twins. <laughs> Somebody wanted to know where he gets his hair done. <laughs> Not from 
me. <laughs> no, that's not for you. That's not for you. Uh, and the, uh, oh, people looked in the hardware store window but missed the MEK and instead found a police jacket and a go away welcome mat. <laughs> inventive, inventive. Um, we also had somebody found the pillow and the fish. <laughs> Sleeping with the fishes! <laughs> I was going to say, Team L is working the script next year, and well done. And, uh, and lastly, I think, lastly, uh, what's this one now? OD'd on the, on the psychotic medications mixed with the alcohol. Indeed. Mr. E and Officer Bookham. Not bad, not bad. We, somebody actually thought that that was cocaine on him. <laughs> yeah. It's actually baby powder. Um, so, but we do have a winning team, which we will announce in just a moment. But first, I need to introduce you to my writing partner, our director, and my wonderful sister, Greta Rock. because every year when we do Murder by the Falls, it means we're about to kick off the new season. And this is our 83rd consecutive season. Yeah, that is a wow. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're one of very few theaters in the country that have been consecutively running that long. And it's because of people like you who support us and do that, that we can put on shows every single year that way. So this is a wonderful thing. And also tonight, of course, um, this is a community theater, and nothing shows community more than being able to go out into the community and allow us to look in windows and just walk the streets freely and do the things that we do. So we really appreciate the support of the city of, Sh of Chagrin Falls. Um, and also our police department. Mm -hmm. <laughs> them and, but um and we're their clothes and <laughs> wear their clothes that's right but that's not not a, you know anything to look at lightly wearing the uniform is a big deal and uh chief brush just lets us use the uniforms every year so we do thank you for that um we also want to thank the live clues that you saw i don't know if they're all still here but lisa <laughs> and mike stuff, so that's very, very cool. Um, and being part of community theater means we're a family. All of us up here are volunteer, not paid actors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do this because we love to perform, and we do this all year round, very, you know, all here, but all over Ohio, everywhere. There's a lot of us that have been in shows, other places together, and you do become a family. When you do things like this, your rehearsal, with each other, sometimes more than you see your own families. So when you lose part of your family, it's very sad. And we did last week lose a member of our community theater family, Mr. Frank Malaro. And uh, I did a little look up on him. He started working as a volunteer in 65, 1965, until last year. The last performance he did with Don Edelman was Sunshine Boys next door. And uh, so from 65 to 2011, appeared in almost 60 shows. That's, yeah. And, and had a life. And a lot of kids. <laughs> How many children did Frank have? Six. Six? Six. Yeah. So he's a busy man. Um, part of those um, 60 shows included nine Murder by Falls, uh, 97 to 2001, and then in 2008, he was an Inspector Gotcha. Um, I had the pleasure of directing him in two Murder by the Falls and sharing the stage with him three times. Um, somewhere in there, he also found time to direct 20 productions um, in his time here. So we are going to miss him very much. We want to dedicate this performance to him. And one of the things that makes us as actors uh, feel the best is, of course, a standing ovation. So I would invite you to please join us in giving our friend and uh, fellow actor, Frank, a standing ovation.
our president, Mr. Tom Neff. There he is. Do you, want to, do you want to lead off with the door prizes, or do we want to, do we want to announce the team that had the most points? Uh, what do we like to do? Nancy Schramm does everything. <laughs> Give the door prices. All right, go for it. Go for it. I've got a script here. You know, you wonder why it doesn't rain in Chagrin Falls for the 27th murder by the falls? <laughs> you know, yeah. we, we've dodged it again. That's right. Drew told me how to do this. Last night I made a couple of mistakes. So I studied overnight. <laughs> determined that Camelot really was have the rain come later, and it came a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, you uh, right. 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 <laughs> You and Team Al together. That's right. Be in good shape. Uh, what we have uh, out in the lobby, uh, fresh off the press, the uh, 83rd season brochure. And last night, we covered the first six performances. And Drew didn't think I did them quite well. And I didn't think I did it quite well. My wife didn't think I did it quite well. <laughs> so, you know, it was almost unanimous. So we thought we would do it again. And, uh, so we would start off with the roar of the grease paint, the smell of the kill. Crowd. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the smell of the kill is a completely different show. We did that four years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's a good show. That's a good show. <laughs> going to start the, the training school for various people on the board who have not ever been in theater. <laughs> um, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to, uh, we have everybody's name and a hat here, and we're going to draw. And my fellow Spartan is going to be asked to draw. They were leading 31 to nothing when I last heard about it. But Jen? And this is for, I think I can read that big print tonight. Um, this is for a pair of tickets for this weekend, either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday matinee. And the name is? Jill Cook. Jill oh. Cook. <laughs> September 28th at the, uh, the theater, and it's a Tony <coughs> Award winner. And we have, uh, for, in honor of that, we have a flex pass, which is absolutely the best deal, I think, within the theater. Uh, eight passes, either one person can come eight times, or eight people can come one time. Or, you know, I can any go on. Time. <laughs> any time. Any, any time. time. To so any show. We need to draw for us. Uh, Michelle, would you draw for us? Sabrina Lahora. Okay, what comes up next? Uh, yeah. Oh, we have uh, bricks that support our endowment fund, and a nice little brochure that goes with them. And out front, you can buy a brick for seventy-five dollars up to. Any number of dollars. <laughs> so, uh, but we have one brick that we're going to give away. And here is where Drew corrected me, rightfully so, last <laughs> evening. We want the person who receives this to have the entry in back to us by October 1st. Not because we're mean and hard spirited, <laughs> but because we're going to put in a new set of bricks then. And so we put in bricks roughly between 35 and 50 bricks at a time. That's a half day's work. Or somebody who puts them in, 
and so we need to have them inscribed and then uh, placed and have all that done by October 1st. So the winner of that is, Natalie, can you draw for us? That's a Studio Orchestra is coming in on the 22nd and 23rd of December, always a good event, and as a part of the Roar of the Grease Paint, as I forgot to announce, <laughs> my third time before this I would do well, but I have to do it in the sound chamber. Uh, the uh, uh, Chagrin Falls Studio Orchestra is in concert with our theater group in uh, the Roar of the Grease Paint. So they are very good, and they're coming December 22nd and 23rd. And then on New Year's Eve, did I miss anything in the process? Oh, <laughs> the Christmas program, uh, which is Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And that's as far as it goes other than New Year's Eve that I'll get into in just a second. But uh, the rest of the year from January 1st or on through the month of August, uh, we'll be in the brochure. But New Year's Eve, we have a delightful program with Pat Mazzarino and friends. And Pat, he sings too. Pat, will clean, Pat will clean up his act on the New Year's Eve and his friends will help. So we will have a bottle of champagne in signifying the New Year's Eve program. And who should draw for this one? Eric? He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a miracle. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. I will probably not pronounce it right. You bet. Yes. You, you bet. Yeah. 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 For the winners. The winning team, despite finding more window clues than there were, <laughs> even with that deduction, still got everything else more correct than everybody. The winners are Team F. fundraiser it really helps us tell your friends how much fun you had grab a brochure on your way out come back and see we have over 200 performances there is never a downtime at this theater we are doing productions back to back until we do this again next September so please come see something bring a friend visit our website look us up on Facebook Twitter call your local newspaper and say why don't you cover Sugar Valley Little Theater yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you all very soon thank you